If you've ever been to the New York City, chances are you've crossed the Brooklyn Bridge. This bridge links between Brooklyn and New York City, which used to be two separate islands actually. But have you ever wondered about who built the bridge? Today in our presentation, we will introduce to you the mind behind the marvelous structure that you see nowadays in New York. Specifically, today we're going to be talking about Emily Warren Roebling, the silent builder behind the Brooklyn Bridge. Though the construction of the bridge first began with her father-in-law, then her husband, she stepped into the unofficial role of field engineer to oversee the successful completion of the bridge. She was born in Cold Spring, New York on September 23, 1843 to Savannah Warren and Phoebe Lickley Warren as the second youngest of 12 children. Even from an early age, she was very intelligent and curious and loved to learn. She wanted to pursue a formal education, so she studied at Georgetown, Georgetown Academy of Visitation in Washington, D.C., where she studied history, astronomy, French, housekeeping and needlework, and many other subjects. Her older brother introduced her to her husband, Washington Roebling. Washington Roebling was an engineering officer on her brother's staff in the Union Army during the American Civil War. Her father-in-law, who originally designed the Brooklyn Bridge, served as the chief engineer on the project to build the Brooklyn Bridge, and when he died suddenly, his work was passed on to his son, Emily's husband. But when her husband got sick and she stepped in for him, becoming a, li a liaison and overseeing the completion of the project, um, after the construction of the bridge, she would go on to become very active in different social, civic, and philanthropic organizations. So this bridge was the first bridge that was built out of steel cable wires. So to many people, they didn't understand the concept and they were skeptical. But during the construction, they also used explosives um, in the caissons under the water. So that way they make tunnels to build the bridge itself. And the bridge consisted cons was considered a historic landmark in the United States and still is. It took about 14 years to fully construct this bridge that we see nowadays. And as we mentioned earlier, John Roebling, um, who became the chief engineer after his, his father's death, took over the project. And um, he felt sick due to the dec decompression sickness that was contracted while working in the caissons for the bridge um, piers deep beneath the river's surface. So due to the lack of light and low oxygen down there, he um, fell sick and Emily, his wife, stepped in and managed the project instead of him. So Emily Roebling had little knowledge about the project to begin with and wasn't sure how to handle everything until she took it upon herself to get further education and she independently studied and developed extensive knowledge of engineering factors, including strength of materials, cable construction, calculating catenary curves and stress analysis. She was doubted by many of the people around her um, being the only woman leader in a world full of um, male engineers. And as you can see in the picture on the left, it says safe for only 25 men at one time. So the world was dominated by men around her and it wasn't easy for her to do the accomplishments that she has done. Due to not holding a title, also her name was not mentioned on any official documentation for the bridge. So you can see how she was breaking a lot of barriers by being the one woman engineer on this project. She accomplished many things throughout her life, and some of these accomplishments are listed here. In 1899, she received a certificate in business law from the women's law class at New York University. And in the same program, which had an essay contest, she submitted an essay called A Wife's Disabilities and Won. She also was extremely involved in organizations such as the Relief Society, the Daughters of American Revolution, and also served on the board of lady managers for New Jersey at the World's Columbian Exposition. And she was the first woman to address the Society of Civil Engineers. She also attended the coronation of Tsar Nicholas II and participated in social organizations during the Spanish-American War. She also served as a nurse and construction foreman at Montauk uh, for the Long Island camp, helping the soldiers there. 
So Emily Roebling is remembered for her great accomplishments until, up until this day. On the left, you can see a picture of the bridge opening ceremony with the fireworks. And on the right, you can see a modern picture of the bridge, much more similar to what you would see today. Also during the opening ceremony in 1883, Emily Roebling rode with the former president Chester Arthur across the bridge at the ceremony, also one of Roebling's competitors called Abraham Hewitt said of her, the name of Emily Warren Roebling will be inseparably associated with all that is admirable in human nature and all that is wonderful in the constructive world of art. He called the bridge an everlasting monument to the self-sacrificing devotion of a woman and of her capacity for that higher education from which she, she has been too long despaired. Long after uh, she's passed, her legacy continues to live on and many people have written books about her life. And um, recently in 2018, um, they dedicated a street tour um, called Emily Warren Rolling Way. Um, it's close to Columbian Heights. Uh, the pictures at the bottom of the slide show the dedication ceremony that um, took place in her honor on May 29th in 2018, where um, this street sign bearing her name is unveiled by two of her youngest descendants, Augustus and Chase Roebling. Thank you so much. Thank you.